Great economic news this week. The latest report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics indicates that inflation is down to 3 percent from last June, much better than expected. In addition to that, wages are continuing to rise faster than inflation, with an average hourly earnings up 4.4 percent from the end of last year. This is all to the benefit of American families. But you know what else would help? Expansion of the child tax credit. When this was done as part of the American Rescue Plan, child poverty was briefly reduced by a stunning 50 percent. Two years ago today, the first checks were issued to the families of 65 million children. Unfortunately, this triumph over child poverty expired at the end of 2021. But Democrats are looking to revive and make permanent the expanded child tax credit. And a leader of that effort in the House joins me now. Congresswoman Susan Del Bene of Washington, Washington State, chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Congresswoman, thank you very much for coming. Uh, yeah, coming back <laughs> to, to the Saturday <laughs> Absolutely. show. Absolutely. So how is what you're proposing different from what expired at the end of 2021? Or would it be the same? Well, it's very much the same. Uh, Really, this is about making sure families have the resources they need. Um, so this was checks that went in the mail. In fact, as you said, uh, the first checks went out um, two years ago today mm -hmm. to families. Uh, monthly checks up to $300 per child and lifted many, many children across the country out of poverty, just under 4 million. Um, so this is incredibly important to helping families pay for housing, for food, for diapers, for um, all the basic needs of their kids. And we know when we make a great investment in our kids, um, great things happen for our country. But kids don't grow up in a year. So right. um, this was in place for a year, but unfortunately only a year meant that many of those kids who were lifted out of poverty may have gone back into poverty. This should be policy that's permanent. Um, that's why we're fighting hard to get um, this enacted again and make it mm -hmm. permanent. Well, speaking of fighting hard, let, let's be real. The Republicans are in control uh, of the House, and they're bent towards extremism over governing. So how likely is it they'll support such common-sense public policy? Well, you're right. They are focused on extremism, and they are focused on tax rates for the wealthy and well-connected and have not been focused on working families. But... I'm a data person. We have tons of data. We have tons of data showing the impact of this policy, showing uh, the impact it's had on families in every community across the country. And the long-term implications of policy like this means that we actually not only help kids, but we save money. Poverty, child poverty costs us over a trillion dollars a year in this country. Mm. Imagine what we can do if we invest in children early, give them great opportunities, that not only saves us money, but it means great outcomes for kids, for our future workforce, um, for our country. And that's what it's about. So we're going to continue to make the argument, talking about the data, the impact mm -hmm. this has had. And this is a policy where we might actually have more information about how it actually works than a lot of policies. Um, so it's a winner. And there's mm -hmm. a strong legislative case to be made. Right. There's a strong leg legislative case to be made. And I said, let's be real about the House. But let's be real about the Senate, because there's a Democratic majority in the Senate. And um, Senator Michael Bennett, Colorado, Democrat of Colorado, is ramping up a similar effort on, this, on the Senate side. Are you two coordinating? A and is the hope that the debate in both chambers could lead to real movement? Absolutely. Um, we have been aligned uh, with our Senate colleagues. So on the House side, myself with Congresswoman DeLauro and Congressman Torres have been the leaders on the House side. Um, we have leaders like Senator Bennett on the Senate side who have been leading this effort. So this is a bicameral effort. Um, we have strong support and we're going to continue. And the president has been very supportive as well. Um, we saw what happened. We did it for a year. Imagine what we can do if we lift mm -hmm. more than half of our, you know, not just that 50 percent reduction in child poverty. We can make that higher and longer term if we implement policy for the long term. Might the good inflation news we got this week help in help the conversation in moving this forward? Um, well, it should. We really have policies that are working, right? We have we've seen inflation down, um, wages up. Um, this is long term impact of strong policy. Um, we are investing in our future. We're investing in infrastructure. We're investing in domestic manufacturing. These are all big wins. Um, Republicans 
have been incredibly extreme and continue down an extreme path, they are not focused on working families. And we're going to make the case not only to our fellow colleagues in the House and the Senate, but also to the American people. And I think the American people are with us. They want strong, responsible leadership that's going to focus on policy that actually helps make a difference for families. Mm -hmm. so that's called governing, and that's something that we're we're doing everything we can to do now, but imagine what we could do if we were in the majority. Right, and, and so uh, if, if we, quote, if we were in the majority, which is significant coming from you because you're the <laughs> chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee and your job is to secure a Democratic House majority Absolutely. in the next midterm election. So how helpful was the uh, inflation data in that effort? It's very helpful because it shows people the impact of the policies we put in place and that smart policy has a long term impact. I mean, a lot of policy we put in place in the last Congress, a historic Congress in terms of what we were able to get done, are actually having an impact right now. And we're going to see that impact continue forward um, to really build a strong economy. It's not a building. Um, it's building a strong economy for years to come. And that means thoughtful long term policy. Republicans are about tearing things apart. Um, we're about building a strong foundation for the future. Um, can you talk about the impact of Speaker McCarthy's <laughs> <laughs> leadership. Um, is what he's doing with the NDAA, um, the culture war, poison pill um, amendments in appropriations bills, it, 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 I guess it might be helping with the hardcore Republican base, but is it also helping you and your effort to get Democrats elected to the House? Well, you kind of put in quotes there <laughs> the word leadership. There has been no leadership. Leadership is not caving to the most extreme in your party over and over again. If anything, um, and you just talked about this with the defense legislation, it went from something that was bipartisan. He caved to the most extreme parts of his party, and it became extreme legislation. Um, and really, to get things done, we need legislation that they get through the House, through the Senate, and signed by the president. That's governing. Um, he's done nothing to really help governing and move policy that actually can have an impact and help families. So we're going to hold Republicans accountable for their extreme views, their extreme legislation that they're moving forward. Um, the American people are with us. They want governance to work. They want people who are thoughtful, who are going to be responsible. They just want strong leaders. And mm -hmm. I think um, Speaker Hakeem Jeffries would be a very, very strong leader. <laughs> just got to get to 2024. <laughs>